Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here, which I know a few of you are, so thanks for joining. Um, before I start today's video on live shopping, I have a favor to ask you. I want to do a video soon on, you know, common questions when it comes to sustainable fashion or maybe like common myths around sustainable fashion. But to do that, I need you guys to submit questions um, because I can try guess what's on your mind, but it'd be a lot easier if you just let me know maybe what you're not sure on and I can try cover it to the best of my ability. So yeah, if you want, you can send me in questions either in the comments below or I'm gonna do a community post and you can put them there if you want. And make sure you subscribe so you can see the video when it comes out. But anyway, let's get on with today's video, which is all around live shopping and the dangers of it. So I'm sure you're either aware or can guess, but live shopping is kind of a bridge between online shopping and traditional shopping. You're basically watching someone on a live stream, go through clothing and either try it on or like hold it up to them and answer any questions you have whilst it's literally happening in real time. As you might imagine, it kind of boomed during the pandemic when all of us were trapped inside and couldn't go shopping in real life. I found quite an interesting statistic on this. It was between March 2020 and July 2021, live commerce purchasing around the world rose by 76%. So obviously there were a lot of us on our TikTok streams or whatever, just shopping for something to do. But actually live shopping has been around for a lot longer than that. And I guess that was kind of news to me. I thought it was a relatively new phenomenon, but in China especially, it's been around for ages and it's very firmly established there. I think something like 45% of Chinese shoppers were expected to purchase via live stream last year. That's insane, that's almost 50% of the whole country's purchasing demographic was expected to make some of those purchases through a live. I don't know if it's just me, I'm not a live shopper. I tend to look away from these things because of the feeling I have about them. So maybe this is like a really common occurrence that I just don't know about and a lot of you are live shopping already. But I thought it could be interesting to go into why I think they're really bad and yeah, see if you agree by the end. Okay, first one is not only how much they're pushing you to buy, but how fast they're pushing you to complete that purchase. On TikTok especially, you can literally buy the item they're showing at that instant they're showing it without even leaving the app. So like your barrier to buying is completely removed. Not to mention whilst you're on this live stream, you're often getting pushed to buy with special discount codes that are only valid for the time that the live is live, <laughs> I guess. It's forcing you to make a really quick decision about something that you've maybe only just been introduced to and you don't have time to think over. Some people literally call it the buy now, think later model because of this effect. I found some really interesting statistics when I was researching this model. Compared to other e-commerce formats, like say just going to an online website and scrolling through there, conversion rates through live streams are 10 times more likely. So you are 10 times more likely to buy something if you see it on a live versus on just a web page when you're sitting at home alone. TikTok especially has managed to really tap into this market. Even without lives, TikTok users are almost twice as likely to purchase the items they see on the app compared to other apps. I know the 60% say that the app inspires them to shop even when they don't really feel like it. So you can imagine if TikTok just on its own is inspiring people to shop constantly while they're scrolling, live streams are like that on steroids. They're, you know, because you literally have someone in your face live, you know is live, telling you to buy this product. The next kind of reason I don't like them is because platforms have kind of tapped into the influencer phenomenon to push these products even further. So like it's well known that social media influencers have a certain level of trust for us as consumers. I don't know the complete psychology behind it, but I think if you follow someone, you are kind of putting your trust in them with that follow button. So anything they promote from that point on, you're more susceptible to buy because you've already invested that trust in them. I think I will put some more screenshots on the screen that maybe contradict us or maybe back up. I'm not sure. But TikTok live streams have understood the assignment here 
and they are using celebrities and influencers to really push sales. So for example, Kim Kardashian went onto a Chinese streaming platform to sell her perfume line and it sold 15 thousand bottles within minutes of her just appearing and chatting about it on this live stream that's insane i mean i know kim kardashian could sell pretty much anything at this point people just believe her and, and buy into her products because she's a kardashian but i think even she might have been impressed with these numbers Another example and kind of the reason I got to thinking about this topic in the first place was AliExpress recently announced that they were going to be launching a live streaming platform and they were going to be paying influencers to appear on there. These are UK influencers, my worldwide audience might not know them, but Katie McDermott was one of these influencers they chose. And I managed to find one of her live streams like backed up online. So I watched it. And I don't want to be mean. I'm just going to, you know, be a bit general here. You can watch it yourself, make your own opinions. But without being too mean, it felt disorganized and disingenuous. Like I was watching her show these products that didn't look like great quality in my opinion. And she didn't really seem that excited about them either. But she had a job to do, so she was trying to push them. And the other thing I kind of noticed was she didn't really know what these products were or what she was promoting or what was really going on in a way. There was a woman behind the camera that had to step in several times to help her, you know, fill in information like what she was actually promoting. At one point, she was like, do people have to download the app to do this? And the woman like answered off screen. Or she was like kind of talking about the product, but kind of talking about how it suited her and whatever. And the woman like stepped in to say, oh, it's only 20 pounds guys, by the way. Like she was kind of like leading the conversation and like interrupting if she didn't think she was being pushy enough. And I just found that really interesting. Another reason I don't like them is like this hyper consumption they're promoting. And I guess what I mean is like when you're watching a live stream, you can literally see how many other people are watching that live stream with you. You can see the comments scrolling up as you go. And that just creates a sense of urgency in my mind. I'm not sure if it's the same for everyone, but I think like if I were in a position where I wanted to buy these items, it would make it a really anxious experience for me because I know that like 15,000 people are seeing the same live stream as me. They're seeing this product as it pops onto screen. So if I want that item, I feel like I'm battling 15,000 people to get to it and shop it before it runs out of my size. And that will make me shop it much faster without asking any questions or like, you know, without properly reviewing what's happening. Like I said before, it kind of promotes you to buy now, think later about it. And I think there's a really good example here of that streamer that went live kind of, I don't know, like last year maybe. The one that literally makes like $14 million a week, I think, just by showing an item for like a couple of seconds. Like she literally like unboxes it, shows it, throws it away, does the next one. And it's like, and it's like a, it's like a conveyor belt kind of thing. But people are still buying from her when she's like not even showing the product properly. She's showing like one side of it for three seconds. And if you see it, you see it. If you like blink, you don't. And I think that's just like the perfect example of how dangerous this can be. I mean, if people are buying from her just because she's showing it on the live stream for a couple of seconds, how can that not be seen as dangerous? How can that not be a warning sign that this format does not allow us to think straight when we're buying something. I saw a really good quote on this actually from an influencer. She said something like, you can see a flower or a painting maybe and think I really like that without necessarily making the next step to think I want that or I have to have it. And that kind of should extend to clothes. We should be able to see like a really nice dress on someone without thinking, I have to have that dress. And she thinks that what social media platforms are trying to do is flatten our emotions and almost merge them. So we're not thinking clearly. And we interpret this liking an item as a need for the item and, you know, immediately go to purchase it without making that step to think, yes, I really like this, but do I need it? Will it suit me? Will it work with my wardrobe? The final thing and Maybe the thing that annoys me most about this is how little these 
platforms know or care about the clothes they're promoting. So many formats of this have like a live chat where consumers who are watching it can ask questions about the products and, you know, get their answers in real time and that'll push them to buy and whatever. But many influencers, you know, maybe smaller time influencers, but also with Katie McDermott, I'm sure this was the case. They don't know where their clothes are from. They don't know anything about the materials, about the factories, about the garment workers that made them, about the supply chains that got them from the factory to their living room where they're promoting this item. There was a TikTok compilation that I'm thinking specifically of here where their live stream viewers were asking them where are these clothes made from? And they were literally saying something like, I don't know, but I don't care. And this is not my job. And I'm just here to promote the clothes. I'm not here to ask these questions. Don't ask these questions and whatever. I'll like link it or show it or whatever so you can see. And that's so scary to me. How can these people not care about where their clothes are from that they're pushing to millions of people? How can you get away with not knowing where these clothes are from? Like say, say that was a brand that was doing that, that was, you know, hosting this live stream themselves and customers were asking them, where are your clothes from? They're saying, I don't know, I don't care, just buy them. We would not accept that. I mean, I hope we would not accept that, but that would raise serious red flags and I'm sure they get called out. Why is it that these influencers can get away with promoting AliExpress, Shein, Temu, whatever, and just be able to brush off comments like that and just say, we're here for the clothes only? It's 2024. We're not here for the clothes only. People know better now. And these influencers should have to be accountable for the clothes they're recommending. And I guess that goes into the whole influencer debate of responsibility for what they promote and stuff. And that's a whole other topic. I think there needs to be maybe some kind of regulation here or you know maybe just some like moral conduct if you're promoting this kind of consumerism and you're not thinking about what else you're promoting like slave labor then you deserve some repercussions okay i've very thoroughly gone into all the disadvantages of live shopping but i don't think live shopping inherently is a bad idea if it's done right if it's done correctly I mean, it can be a really good way of brands reaching their community or like an influencer reaching their community and genuinely talking about products that they really like and showing it in a way that doesn't feel pushy, but feels a little bit closer. You know, like brands can build a connection to their customers that isn't, you know, you have to buy this, you have to buy that. But it could be like, we're highlighting this item this week. Let us show you it with someone wearing it in this body type this body type, this body type in real life. You can ask us questions about the material and how it flows and how it drapes and you know about how to style it and all these ideas. And I think it can be a really good way of getting a closer look at a product and solidifying your belief that you do need it or not. You know, sometimes you don't know about an item till it turns up on your door. By doing this, you can make an item more accessible, I guess. I hope this makes sense. I would love to know your guys' thoughts on this. I obviously feel very strongly about this. So yeah, it'd be nice to hear what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to send me questions for video in the future, maybe next week if I get enough questions by then about your sustainable fashion questions. <laughs> and I will do my best to answer them. I hope you have a lovely day. I hope you like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it and I will see you next time, hopefully. Bye.